the creative is the place where no one else has ever been. You have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. And what you'll discover will be wonderful because what you'll discover is yourself. That was said by Alan Alda. And it was Albert Einstein who said that the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. And we have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. Very true words. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Surviving the Matrix. My name is Maxwell Egan, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Now, tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about brain chemistry, about the power of emotion and how it affects reality. I've had a lot of letters from people and conversations with people, and I've seen a few forum posts and things and from people who started to wake up to all of this stuff, and they say, hang on a minute this is all true, the, the governments don't have our best interests at heart, they're spraying chemicals in the sky, they're poisoning the water, they're poisoning the food, fluoride does not protect my teeth, they're finding out all of these things and realising that there are dark forces at work here and they're writing to me and, and asking me saying look how do you stay positive in the face of all of this information? I mean a lot of this is very scary stuff, how do you manage to maintain your life and, and keep going and how do you manage to stay positive in the face of all of this negative information and what I attempt to explain to these people is that as I've often said before actually folks it's not negative information it's just information what's negative is the emotion that people tend to attach to the information because by attaching emotion to information that's the type of reality you create for yourself if you see everything that's going on as being negative then you'll create a negative reality for yourself I simply see it as a battle of energy that's just the way I look at everything now folks I look at everything on an energetic level because ultimately that's all it is all of these things that are happening are happening on an energetic level and that might be a hard concept for some people to get their heads around at first but it really is all about energy now when you understand what reality is, when you understand that all that actually exists, as I often say folks, and I know I'm repeating myself here, but when you understand that all that actually exists is energy expressed as photon light and phonon sound, and that these energies of light and sound have two different polarities, and these can be expressed as, as any two polar opposites you like, light, dark, good, bad, positive, negative, love or fear different expressional frequencies of these two different polarities is what makes up all of reality. You're simply just one frequency of a single consciousness experiencing reality as the person you are at this particular time. That's all that you are. This is a deeper understanding that was in many religions and we'll get to that a little bit later. But getting back to staying positive in the face of everything that's going on. When you understand what I've just explained to you about reality, and I've explained it in depth to you many times before, so there's no point in really going through the whole thing again on this show, but when you understand the whole energetic basis of reality, and then you begin to understand how your body works, how the beautiful, wonderful and biological computer that is you actually works, and how this computer manifests reality and how that reality is based on the emotional content that you put into the computer a whole new way of dealing with things becomes available to you simply by understanding how your body works and this is how I approach it folks this is how I've managed to keep myself happy all the time and if a little bit of depression ever does sneak in there well I can just focus on the true nature of reality, the true nature of energy, and it all makes a difference. I mean, sure, folks, I can find myself getting stressed sometimes. A couple of months ago, I had so much internet trouble that I was getting I was getting 30 seconds of internet about every 20 minutes. And this went on for about a month. And after a month of trying to do research, trying to do these radio shows, trying to do just live a normal life, when I'm someone who gets a lot of my information and, and has a lot of contact with other people around the world via the internet, 
After a month of it, I was incredibly stressed, and I was very far from my centre. I wasn't depressed, but I was just frustrated. It got to a stage of complete frustration. So, like, nobody's perfect, folks. I'm not perfect. I'm just a person, just like you. But it was a nightmare. And we all go through these times. But it didn't get me sad, didn't get me depressed, didn't get me upset, didn't make me want to hurt anybody. It got me frustrated. It got me incredibly frustrated, and I ended up falling into that frustration. But it gave me the opportunity to learn from that experience. And with the internet censorship looming its ugly head in Australia, it was probably a good little push to not be too dependent upon the internet. So anyway, getting back to the biological computer that is your body. A couple of weeks ago, it might have even been last week, and I know I've mentioned it before on previous shows, I know I talked about it with John Lipscomb one day on air, but the way to keep yourself in a positive state, or a very helpful way to keep yourself in a positive state, and something that has totally worked for me, is to understand how the chemistry of your brain works, and understand how your brain and your heart interact with each other. And I just want to try to put it into a nutshell here tonight, just for anybody who may not be aware of the information, and also just to refresh the memory of those who may have forgotten how the biological computer that is your body actually works, how the brain chemistry and and heart chemistry actually works. Now, your heart and your brain send signals to each other all day. And they do it all the time. But if you could measure these signals, what you would find is that your heart actually sends more signals to your brain than your brain sends to your heart. Now you might think, well, why would this be? The brain is what controls everything. The brain is sort of like the the central processor. If you want to move your hand, you think it, and then your brain sends a signal to your hand and it moves. But this is because your hand is a voluntary muscle. All the voluntary actions of your body, all of these muscles receive a lot of signals from the brain. But your heart is an involuntary muscle. You can't stop your heart beating. Even your lungs are sort of a voluntary and involuntary muscle because you can stop your lungs breathing. You can hold your breath. They will sit there and and naturally breathe and contract. Once, Once you start them going, it's this perpetual motion machine. Once you're born and those lungs start moving. But you can concentrate and stop them moving for a while if you want. So you can exercise some slight control over your lungs. But you can't stop your heart beating. Your heart is this involuntary muscle that just keeps going. Now, your heart, apart from being the pump that pumps your blood around your body, it also generates an electromagnetic field that influences the reality around you and it also reads signals from the surrounding field and the main signals that your heart sends out to the outer world are emotional signals the electromagnetic field that's produced by your heart is actually affected by emotion and this affects the energy field around you this can actually be very well demonstrated by events such as 9-11 when 9-11 happened there were universities that read a change in the energy field of the planet while that happened and that was due to people's emotions charging the field it was a very emotional event it went out around the world and we had a global charging of the energy field with a particular emotion and this was this was readable by universities around the world they measured a change in the earth's magnetic field during the 9-11 event. So this just demonstrates how it works. Emotion literally does produce an electromagnetic field, but it also produces more tangible things. It produces things on a physical level as well. Emotions actually produce certain events within your body, certain biological events, and certain things that happen within your blood. What your heart does is it generates these little things called neuropeptides. Neuropeptides are Well, if you look at it in a very simplistic term, neuropeptides are the food that your brain uses to create reality. And I'm I'm trying to put things in the simplest way I can think of here, folks. It's no good trying to baffle people with intellectuality when you're trying to explain something to them. So when you feel an emotion, your heart produces these little things into your bloodstream 
and these things are called neuropeptides and these go to your brain and your brain uses them as food to create reality. And I know that sounds weird but this is actually how it works so just bear with me for a little bit folks. And you can actually demonstrate this yourself. Whenever you feel an emotion, think about it folks, whenever you're angry or you're, you're jealous, well these are physical things. You, you, when you have one of these emotions or one of these deep emotions, anger is a deep emotion, joy is a deep emotion, happiness, lust is a deep emotion, these are all deep emotions, anger, jealousy, all of the, the deep strong emotions, these all produce a physical feeling in your body. So you ask, what is that feeling? Well, that feeling is the neuropeptides that have just been pumped into your bloodstream by your heart. That is that emotion that you are feeling. It's a physical manifestation as well as an energetic manifestation.